the importance of knowing your own history. Um, today I'm at the Aga Khan Museum and it's very nice for me to be here because the Aga Khan Museum, which is right there in the back, I'm actually, first of all, there's a park uh, that you see right uh, behind me. It's known as the Aga Khan Park. And uh, I'll sh maybe I'll do some B-roll and show you a lot of different aspects of this park and, and how it's displayed and all the architecture. But all the way behind there, it's, uh, you see the Aga Khan Museum. Now, those of you who have really been following the channel, um, my cholesterol video from two years ago was shot here at the grand opening of the museum. Two years ago, or maybe it wasn't grand opening, but it was something. But um, this museum represents a structure um, which has a lot to do with Muslim history. And as you guys know, I'm a Muslim. And um, in, more specifically, I'm an Ismaili Muslim, which is a specific part of Islam. Now, the reason I want to convey my feelings here is because I really, really believe that knowing one's history can be very important for understanding the present and the future. Simply because, I want to give you some examples here. So, so when I think of uh, very recent history for me, right? So like my grandfather, you know, I was asking my dad uh, about our entire family and I found out that my grandfather was a pure entrepreneur and he had uh, the best restaurant in all of Bangladesh named Kashmir Hotel. We call it hotel, we call it restaurants hotels. And um, he was a person who would give people a lot of loans and he was very good at heart. He, he tried to help everyone, he would give away money and he wouldn't even ask for something in return. He, he was very beneficent, um, very uh, uh, generous with his uh, material belongings and material possessions so, so so much as to giving money to poor people at the expense of his own immediate family uh, sometimes and uh, you know I, I learned about the persecutions that happened how my my dad and his entire family had to escape Bangladesh to go to Pakistan um, on this ship named Rustam <laughs> For those of you who've seen Munna Bhai, uh, MBBS, you might remember the guy Rustam. Anyway, um, and just understanding that history, just very immediate history, um, you, you, bet, you, you, you tend to perhaps understand your own nature, right? So when we look at history, we can look at Homo sapiens. We can look at, you know, you can read the book Sapiens, or you can look at... Uh, the extinctions that have happened in the past. You read the book, The Sixth Extinction, and you tend to understand how we've evolved as Homo sapien. But then you look at a very micro level and you say, okay, what about my personal genetics, right? So you can look at it from a very soul, spiritual perspective, say, look, my, my heart is from the eternal source or, or you know, this infinite source that we're a part of. Uh, you can call it the universal intellect. This is what Ismaili philosophers, the, the kind of the philosophy that my ancestors belong to, um, uh, or my, at least my religious ancestors. Uh, that's another something, something very interesting I, I want you to keep in mind. There's always two types of ancestry that, that a person has. So I want you to think back at your life as well. So for me, my ancestry is more recently Indian. Right? So, for example, my grandfather, my grandmother, they're all from India. My grandmother's from Bombay. But then you look at my dad, who's born in Bombay, or sorry, born in Hyderabad, born in India, and my mom, who's born in Dhaka, Bangladesh. I'm born in Pakistan. So, if, if I look at my biological, like my blood ancestry, it's more India. But then, obviously, you know, I have like a white complexion, a little bit, you know, lighter, I guess than a lot of brown people and my brother's even whiter than me so and and my mom is super white and so was my grandpa so then i th think well maybe some of the ancestry might be persian or syrian or something like that now why because my religious ancestry when you look at my my 
the sect of Islam that I belong to goes all the way back to Syria, it goes all the way back to Salamiyah, which is a city in Syria, uh, which I visited uh, a few years ago. If you go on my Facebook, you'll see a bunch of photos from there. But when you look at the Aga Khan Museum here, it's the only museum in the world of its kind. It has specifically focused on uh, Muslim artifacts, Muslim uh, civilization. And uh, there's, I believe, 1100 years or 11 centuries of, um, of, of Muslim civilization history just right there inside at the Aga Khan Museum here in Toronto. And um, it's very nice for me because I was here, actually I was here on Nuit Blanche, which is uh, like an all-nighter um, uh, full of performances and, and just like having fun and, 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 and enjoying the, the festivities here. It happened here at the museum as well as at the Smiley Center that is behind me, in front of me and behind you. Um, and it was Rumi's birthday, so I got to see, you know, the, the swirling dervishes. We were like going round and round. You know, that is also part of my, my history, my cultural history, my religious history. Uh, I got to see some dances happening and we danced ourselves. It reminded me of Syria. So I want you to dig deep within yourself to understand your spiritual history in terms of being a human being and being part of the universe and, and, and stuff like that. Um, but also think about your biological history. So get to know where, what about your dad, your grandfather, your grandmother, where are they from? What, because a lot of the things that go through our minds are because of what's in our DNA. And, and you can't just ignore biology, right? You can think of spirituality and you can go back, you know, an infinite number of years before the Big Bang and you can do all that through Vipassana meditation or other forms of meditation that you're a part of. But then you also have to look at your religious ancestry. So for example, if you're a Christian or a Jew or a Hindu or a Buddhist or, a, or a, any religion for that matter or any belief system, it doesn't even have to be a religion. It could be an ideology like capitalism. You know, capitalism is a religion. Democracy is a religion. Communism is a religion. The word religion actually comes from, um, the, 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 I looked this up, it's like a Latin, reli and geo or gion, which is uh, binding together to the source, which is, you know, what we call God. So anything that binds you together in a community or in a, in a fellowship to reach something higher is a religion. So you can think of uh, so many things, right? You look at the diet cults out there, the paleos and the crossfits and the veganism. And this is all religions, believe it or not. It's really interesting, but these are all religions. So anyway, um, I wanted to put that out there um, in terms of my personal religious history and uh, uh, yeah, you know, my, my grandfather gave away a lot of money to his, uh, his relatives, his friends, new entrepreneurs, like budding entrepreneurs that needed money for restaurants and, and a lot of those cocksuckers actually opened up restaurants right next to my grandfather which is really sad. And uh, when we had to escape and, and undergo persecution, we uh, you know, escaped to Pakistan and, and in a ship. You know, so I, I, I think about all that and I say, you know what, I'm from a grandfather who was a pure entrepreneur, was very successful in the restaurant business, then had to escape on a ship with like seven bucks or something, like, like some, some nothing amount to, to Pakistan start over and then my dad worked so hard to uh, become a doctor in Pakistan then he well, then we all came to the States and then he had to you know he couldn't pass the exam so he had to work in a convenience store and, and, a, and a grocery store and a tobacco store and and, and, and he underwent so many things now he's a, a teacher at, a, at high school and so is my mom and they're very happy uh, teaching and I learned so much from them so so understanding where my dad has come from, my mom, uh, my mom's mom, my grandma, Nani, they used to wrap peppermints together in, a, in, in, in their little like room in, in the village to make money, make ends meet. And, and I think about that, it's like, I come from that, right? 
that those hardships is, is where I come from. So you really dig down deep in, inside your ancestry and, and, and think first what's happened recently in your life. Like what, what, are you, what have your mom and dad been through? What, what have your grandparents been through? Your great grandparents, dig deep. Go talk to a great uncle, go talk to a cousin. Go talk to someone who actually gives a shit. Like in my family, there aren't very many people who know stuff about our ancestry because they don't fucking think about it or uh, care about it that much, as much as I research and care. Um, but it'll really surprise you. It'll, it'll allow you to understand why your parents behaved the way they behaved or why your grandparents behaved the way they behaved. I remember my, my, my dada, my grandfather from my dad's side, every time he would come in, I would offer him a papaya because that was his favorite fruit. And I would always ask him, Hey, Dada, I can do something Dada, I can do something Dada, I can do something Which means, hey, hey, grandfather, can I do something for you? Do you need anything? Can I, can I help you? And uh, he would get annoyed at times and like, give me like, like a big slap on the face. Um, and I would cry for a while. And then again, I would ask him, Hey, Dada, do you want something? Like, um, you know, and, and that allows us to really look at fear in a different perspective right when when you know that you're part of something great which we're all a part we're all a part of something great like the fact that you're listening to me here means you've evolved over you know three billion years like life started on earth three billion years ago so you've evolved for three billion years from like amoeba, amoeba, like amoeba bacteria like unicellular organisms you know, to multicellular you've undergone uh, five extinctions like after five extinctions you're still here somehow uh, you know what I mean is life in DNA uh, cells you're still here unbelievable so um, yeah, you know, it, it really puts fear in a different perspective, right? So when you see something, you, you see something that you think is like grounded on, on something really substantial and you're scared of it. It could just be groundless, right? Uh, Seneca in his 13th letter, in Letters to a Stoic, has this uh, chapter on groundless fear, how we fear things that are ridiculous and uh, preposterous, right? So Seneca was the richest man in the Roman Empire. Uh, he, he had 300 million of whatever their currency was, I don't remember. And he denounced materialistic possessions. You know, he would go on these 10 day fasts. He would do these, you know, the entire month of eating only rice and beans. And, uh, you know, you look at other people who are adding things to their life, right? You're adding things, you're adding a car, you're adding a house, you're adding clothes name brands you're adding watches you're adding products right and and speaking of products you know you look at my hair now uh i haven't actually uh put any products in my hair since so a lot of you don't know this but a few months ago before i moved to medellin i uh, shaved my head completely just pff, gone so i'll include some photos in there for you to see and and you'll be really surprised at what's happening uh, in terms of what I did to myself. Um, and the reason I did that is because I was too confident in my hair. You know, my hair allowed me to become confident. So I wanted to know what would happen if I got rid of my hair, if I became completely bald. And turns out, a lot of my confidence was gone. I felt really lousy and miserable and uh, beta. And uh, it really allowed me to understand how, how I value my materialistic possessions, like my hair. And, um, you know, a lot of the times I, you remember I was making those videos with a hat on and, and it was because I had shaved my head. And I'll show you some photos. You'll be shocked at what I look like with my, ha with my, with my head shaved. And then my hair has grown back and then in, in a couple of months it's going to be a full head of hair. But what I'm, what I'm, I mean, it's already a full head of hair, but it's going to be like crazy hair in a couple of months. Now, what I'm trying to convey here to you is this. Hair, yes, it gave me confidence, but getting rid of it allowed me to understand my own fragility, my own weakness, my own ego and care of materialistic possessions like my hair. And it's very sad um, when you think about it. And it makes me understand the world too. 
So yeah, um, I haven't put any products since I shaved my head, nothing. I shampoo once a week, so once every seven days, and I use an organic shampoo and conditioner. Um, and hair's great, like, I mean, it's fucking great, right? It's like, I, I, I remember my other hair that you used to see it was like nasty, looked like a wig. Now you, you see it's like really good hair here, right? It's like natural. Um, I don't have to, like, I can go around with the wind. Uh, I'm not adding anything to my life, like hair products, hairspray, and all this shit. It's just uh, the art of subtraction, via negativa, as uh, Nassim Taleb says. Um, I also, first, uh, by the way, comment below if you like these long videos because uh, I'm gonna start making long videos simply because I believe in them. You can always come back to it. Um, I like rants. You know, it's just that simple. I, I have a lot to say. I have a lot to convey. I don't, I don't want to split stuff up, right? I want to convey my heart out. I don't want to listen to some, uh, you know, YouTube algorithm expert saying that if I do five minute videos, it's going to be optimal or two minute videos is going to be optimal. I honestly want to do videos from the heart as long as it takes because I, if I have something to say, I want to say it. And if I become exhausted or if my heart starts telling me that this is enough, then I'll stop. But I don't want to listen to anyone, honestly, man. Um, yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, so let me talk a bit about my uh, ancestry. Actually, let's do that in part two. <laughs> so this will be part one. I don't know how long this is, but uh, however long it is, is fine. I'll make part two where I will start on my religious ancestry. I'm going to talk about the assassins. Uh, if you've heard about the game, the Assassin's Creed, uh, the word assassins actually comes from my religious ancestors who were the original assassins. I'm going to get really deep into that and, and what that's all about. I might have conveyed that in the past, but I'm going to relate it to how I've infiltrated tribes, how I'm able to um, understand group dynamics and kind of get inside certain things that other people can't get inside. And I think a lot of that might have to do with that religious blood, that religious ancestry. So, um, yeah, let's do that in part two. Uh, this is Farhan. Uh, again, this channel's name is still Doc Testosterone because we have subscribers and followers and I want you guys to get the value. But uh, I'm Farhan now. Call me Farhan. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy in life. I'm very much at peace. Um, I've subtracted a lot and I got changed my number three times so people can't reach me anymore. Um, I've, um, you know, I have a new email so no one can reach me. My old email, I don't even check. Um, I mean, I've hired someone to check it. So if you still email the, the, the dog T stuff or coaching and all that, you'll, you'll get the, you'll get a reply. Um, but you know, I'm not doing any of that. I'm very focused on being physical, being present, being here. Uh, you know I stopped Snapchat and, and, and all that stuff too because, yeah, I'm just focusing. I'm getting a lot done. I'm really reading the right books. I'm self-educating, um, really digging deep into the knowledge that helps me become a complete human being. And, uh, yeah, just very peaceful and very happy in life right now. And uh, I have, you know, the, I have uh, people to thank for that. You know, it's not me who did it people who helped me along the way who really supported me at rough times in the past few months and uh, yeah I hope to keep conveying value to you on YouTube here and uh, on other uh, facets and uh, right now I'm shooting a product uh, it's an audio product it's it's on choice architecture it's on behavioral economics it's on behavioral architecture it's how do you configure your physical environment to make it conducive to your success and your goals and your productivity you know, what can you put in your environment or what can you take out of your environment in terms of mental, physical um, possessions or objects so your brain can make easy decisions, can make easy choices that are actually good for you instead of bad for you. So I, I'm coming up with an entire product on that. It's all audio. There might be some bonus videos in there, but there's a lot of bonuses in there, a lot of... Uh, uh, 
I'm coming up with blog posts that you're going to get to soon, um, uh, entire podcast, uh, a lot of free content for you. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm also writing a book for parents about, uh, it's, it's a very interesting book. I'll, I'll convey that in a future video, what it's about. But I'm done with the prologue and chapter one so far. I'm just getting a lot done. And I know from the past, from all of the things I've been engaged in, all of my experiences, I know how to get stuff done. I know how to be productive, how to get a lot of stuff done. And, and I'm really digging deep into my own soul to figure out what those reasons are. You know, how, do, how, do, how can I deconstruct my own brain and heart and, and mind and, and, and body to convey how, what is the best way to surround, how do you surround yourself with something to achieve what you want to achieve? And how do you subtract the poison that's around you, essentially? So that's, um, uh, yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you liked it uh, and want to get uh, notifications on future videos. And, uh, you know, thumbs up if you, if you liked what I said. Thumbs down if you did not. And comment below uh, any questions that you have. I'll try to address it in future videos. I have my team do all the social media work. I'm not really on social media anymore. All I'm doing is, is uh, producing content and my team does the rest. So very grateful for you guys, my team, uh, Manveer, uh, Jeff, or Jev, uh, Lala, um, Sunny, all you guys. Uh, and then Dilip, who, who was helping before in the past, uh, Rabbi Rosenberg, all you guys are amazing. Um, Lamia, Zach, all of you who've been really with me in, in the past. And, and, and most of all, Luke. Luke Bonner, who's my best friend, lives in Australia. He's my spiritual mentor and has really helped me out during, during the rough time. So thanks so much and uh, I hope to see you soon.